Hello and welcome everybody to today's uh, webinar. So I'm Stefan Chaborski. I am the CSO of Renovate, and today we're going to be talking about uh, three-dimensional cell culture and its application to cancer cell migration and invasion. So the way I will structure this is first of all I will talk through what uh, 3D culture is about and then introduce Albatex technology and then give an overview of, its, uh, of how it can be used very briefly uh, and then we'll go straight into the uh, data and evidence uh, regarding modeling cancer cell uh, migration and invasion and then we'll finish off covering uh, techniques for which uh, are compatible with Albatex technology. And then at the end, there'll be opportunity to um, ask questions via the chat box, which you should find available uh, on the webinar website. Okay, so uh, without further ado, let's uh, move on. Okay, so you should see a little laser pointer dot moving along, and I'll use that to uh, lead you through these slides. So the first slide talks about how cells adapt to their environment and in vivo in tissues in the body cells of course reside in three dimensions in close association with neighboring cells and the extracellular matrix and we can see this shown schematically in this diagram here and of course in vitro what we do is we deconstruct these relationships and cells are then grown in plastic vessels such as multi-well dishes, uh, petri dishes or flasks and they come into contact with a flat substrate such as the bottom here and as cells encounter that substrate they change their shape and form and as a consequence of that they remodel their cytoskeleton and internal structure including organelles such as the nucleus and it is well known that if you influence the shape of a cell uh, that will uh, trigger changes in gene expression, protein translation and function. So while studying cells in two-dimensional dishes such as this, cells are flattened and the function of those cells is known to be different from their counterparts in vivo. So if we look a little more closely about that, that 2D environment uh, the classic conventional culture system grows cells in monolayers and the cells are almost 50% against the, the surface of the cell, 50% against the plastic or exposed to the uh, medium above. Uh, the cells are flattened as I described and the opportunity for cell-to-cell -cell interactions is minimized. Uh, to their very edges as you can see in number four. And certainly there's very little opportunity to create three-dimensional complex structures as what you would find in vivo. And we can see uh, this clearly uh, by looking at an individual cell. And this has been done by confocal microscopy of fibroblasts. This is a single fibroblast which has been stained with phylloidin to visualize the F-actin cytoskeleton. So on the left we see how in 2D you can visualize the cell from above and also from the side. And you can see how flattened the cells have become. Whilst in three dimensions, using Alvatex 3D technology, it's 3D all the way around. And the same applies to the nucleus. Note how flattened the nucleus has become in two dimensions or spherical in 3D in Albatex. And that is very important because alteration of the shape of the nucleus and the shape of the cell, as it says here in published papers, can modify chromatin structure and gene expression and hence function. So it's a well-known phenomenon that growing cells in 2D is different to studying their growth in three dimensions, which is really what we need to be doing to try and get a more physiologically relevant model. So, Reinnovate has developed a simple solution 
for routine three-dimensional cell culture. And this is based on recreating the natural three-dimensional environment. So this image here shows a population of cells which has been grown in Alvatex in 3D. And the same cell type was also grown in, vi in vivo uh, by transplantation. And you'll see here the cells going in 3D in a, as a tissue and very comparable to what we get in 3D here. And the evidence that uh, we, our customers and collaborators, have now uh, uh, developed over the years goes to show that growing cells in 3D can impact their cell viability, cell function, and create models which are more representative of real tissues. So it's a real advance in the generation of cell-based assays. So let's just talk a little bit about what Alvatex actually is. So across the top line here, we have the two-dimensional situation of growing cells in these plastic receptacles and vessels. And this is very traditional and conventional. And cells grow as monolayers. So these receptacles are made of polystyrene. So we've taken polystyrene and we've changed its geometry to create this highly porous three-dimensional scaffold. And as I say, it's highly porous. In fact, it's 90% porous, meaning that 90% of Alvatex is actually space, space into which cells can grow and occupy. And you can see them here growing inside the material. The Alvatex scaffold is engineered into a 200 micron thick membrane. And you can see that here in cross-section and high magnification here in the middle image on the bottom. Notice how porous the material is. However, in this section here on the right, you cannot see those pores any longer because they are now full of cells. So in this situation, this three-dimensional culture has completely filled the uh, scaffold and we've created a miniature slab of tissue inside the culture dish. So there are various formats of Alvatex products, and these can be subdivided into either plates or well inserts. And the top line shows the plate formats. Currently available are 12, 24, and 96 well plate formats. And we have here the well inserts, and they're available in two sizes, 6 and 12 well. So the presentation of the scaffold is very important and it also enables you to use this uh, product in a very versatile way. So for example, in scenario A, Alvatex is presented in the bottom of a well. So this is the plate format. So these cells in 3D only receive nutrition from above because the medium is above. Whereas in the well insert, the scaffold is presented halfway up the well in this bucket, the well insert, and those cells receive nutrition from the medium from above and from below. In scenario C, we see the well insert again, but note how there's a lot, much larger uh, body of medium here. And this is this product shown in the photograph, which is essentially a cradle which sits inside a Petri dish and holds three separate well inserts and enables users to present to the three-dimensional culture a larger volume of medium, which may be useful for uh, growing cells for a longer term, uh, undisturbed, uh, but also for conditioning larger volumes of medium by the 3D culture. Okay, so Alvatex is uh, as I say, a solution for simple and routine three-dimensional cell culture. And its use has been demonstrated in a wide range of applications. And these can be summarized as follows. These applications will demonstrate how uh, growing cells in 3D can influence cell structure and function. Um, and we have a liver application in this area. Also, uh, the growth and differentiation of cells uh, in particular, stem cell differentiation in Alvatex. And uh, a specialized aspect of that involves bone differentiation and also a stem cell-derived neuronal 
meteorite outgrowth assay. In addition, there are models uh, and cell-based assays which have been built uh, uh, for applications in cancer cell biology, uh, including uh, cancer cell cytotoxicity, and we will talk today about cancer cell migration. And lastly, there are examples of development and of organized tissue structures, uh, such as a full thickness skin model. So all of these applications uh, can be accessed uh, via the website in the uh, application note uh, area. So let's move on to the uh, business of today, and that is to focus on modeling cancer cell migration and invasion using Albatex technology. So as an overview of the uh, set of data that I'm going to show you, uh, we focused on uh, colorectal carcinoma cells and studying their growth in uh, Albatex in 3D. And I will share with you data uh, regarding the growth of these cells in 3D initially, uh, demonstrate uh, the migration of these cancer cells in 3D culture, and also how uh, these cells can be responsive to uh, chemical stimuli uh, which are known to interact uh, with various uh, pathways involved in cancer cell motility. And lastly, I will cover a proof of concept study describing the initial development of a co-culture model involving uh, epithelial and stromal tissue interactions. So I'll give you a flavor of the sorts of things that uh, you can use Alvatex technology for uh, in this particular application. Okay, so let's focus now on colorectal cancer. So otherwise known as colon cancer or bowel cancer, it represents the growth of uncontrolled growth, that is, of cells in the wall of the large intestine, uh, typically starting in the epithelial lining, and if left untreated, can invade tissues uh, beneath, and ultimately spreading uh, by metastasis throughout the body. Uh, if this is captured at an early stage, it can be dealt with surgically. Um, otherwise, uh, alternative therapies are required especially if it's spread throughout the body. So it's estimated worldwide that 1.2 million or so cases of colorectal cancer were clinically diagnosed. Uh, in 2008, that resulted in 600-odd thousand deaths. So it's clearly a big, important area of cancer cell biology. Uh, it has uh, attracted a huge amount of research over the years and will continue to do so. So colon cancers can be graded uh, according to the Duke stage grading scale. And you can see this described in brief uh, at the bottom here. So you've got stages A, B, C, D uh, as the disease progresses. And you can see in the bottom the percentage survival rates uh, if patients have this type or stage of tumor. So initially, we've got the polyps forming. Uh, and this occurs on the surface of the epithelial lining. And then with Duke stage B, the cells are starting now to invade the wall of the uh, colon. And then ultimately metastasis can occur as in Duke stage C and secondary metastases in Duke stage D. We're particularly interested in the Duke stage B, where things start to uh, move and invade the surrounding tissues. So that's again summarized here. And what we have in this uh, photograph is a uh, pathological specimen of a colon vector tumor growing in the wall of the uh, large intestine. And you'll see now it's beginning to invade the uh, surrounding tissues, this, this just being one of the muscle layers here. And the cells are beginning to invade adjacent areas of stromal tissue as well. Now, this uh, diagram, which I borrowed from this paper here, um, represents the normal situation in the colon, whereby the epithelial cells on the surface have uh, links between them. These are cell adhesion points uh, involving E. cadirin 
cells sitting on the spacer membrane and they're signaling between uh, the stromal tissues underneath the fibroblasts. Now what can happen in cancer is that the uh, a phenomenon known as the epithelial mesenchymal transition whereby cell adhesion between cells is lost, uh, ecoderin levels will uh, decrease and certain cells will start to increase uh, their motility. So with that in mind, we can consider how we can use Albatex technology uh, to create uh, models to study this process in vitro. And we're doing this using two cell lines which have been derived from the same patient and they are representative of different stages of colon cancer progression. And we have a Duke stage B cell line known as SW480 and a Duke stage C lineage known as SW620. And a fair bit is known about these cell lines. They are uh, used uh, widely in the scientific literature and they are readily available from the uh, ATCC repository. So what is known about them is that the 620 cells have a lower E. cadirin expression and higher vermentin expression. And based on what I said on the previous slide, uh, one would predict that the SW620 cells are predisposed to migrate and invade at a greater rate than their SW480 counterparts. So we started to use Alvatex technology to investigate uh, that hypothesis. The first thing we needed to do was to first of all demonstrate to ourselves that indeed uh, Alvatex could support the growth of the cell types. So we did some uh, optimization work whereby we looked at the growth of uh, both 480 and 620 cell lines uh, and the data I show you on this slide is for SW480. And we conducted some basic assays looking at cell viability. This is actually based on uh, NTT absorbance here over a 11 day period. And we're also looking in this plot at uh, protein synthesis over a again 11 day period. And these uh, images are actually montages of lots of individual uh, slide shots uh, sewn together to show a, uh, a low magnification uh, impression of the formation of these cultures over 21 days. That's a histological examination. So we're very pleased and confident that these cells are going well in the material in three dimensions. So we were interested in studying cell migration uh, using these cell types. And we're also aware of uh, the existing technology and approaches which are used to do this. And a popular uh, example of one of these is known as the scratch assay. And this involves uh, growth of the cells in, uh, on two-dimensional conventional plates and uh, creating cultures up until they are 90% confluent and then scratching the surface of uh, those cultures to create a uh, denuded uh, area of plastic uh, upon which you have recolonization of the cell culture into that space. And that's something which is uh, used regularly. And then you can also uh, image by fluorescence to study those cells as well. So here we have SW480 and 620 scratch assays but there are disadvantages with this technology and that is that the cells are actually moving across this flat plastic surface which is artificial as I've already explained and very likely to be different from how cells move in three dimensions especially as well different when invading amongst other cell types. So we need to think about now improving the way we study cell migration and cell invasion and we can use uh, three-dimensional cell culture technology. The movement of cells in uh, two-dimensional systems 
also questions the relevance of the mechanism by which they are migrating. So that's another disadvantage potentially of studying scratch uh, assays. It is also a monoculture system, so it involves only one cell type. So as I've demonstrated already and explained, in uh, the real situation where the colonic tumor is invading surrounding tissues, it obviously involves other cell types. So that obviously is an aspect which is lost in this system. The reproducibility of these models is sometimes variable and also sometimes there's confusion over whether or not actually this is closing the space due to migration or actually proliferation of the culture. So there are some issues there which must be considered. So can we then use our text to create a three-dimensional style migration model? Well, these are data demonstrating that, yes, indeed, we can. And these are two histological images of either SW480 uh, or SW620 cells cultured for 11 days on the scaffold. And the cells were initially seeded on the surface and allowed to uh, grow for that time period. And you can see clearly that uh, cultures of 620 cells, the cells invade more readily compared to the 480 cells. And this is not due to uh, a difference in cell proliferation. We have indeed controlled for that by measuring the amount of uh, double-stranded DNA in either of these culture systems. So one can look at the uh, depth of penetration which is measured here, so the average depth of penetration versus uh, time, and you can see the difference quite nicely between the invasion of cells, these are the 480s, compared to the, the, the 620, no, this is the 620, sorry, this is the 480 lineage here. And another way of looking at these data, or, or, or these slides, rather than measuring uh, individual depths, is to uh, consider measuring the total area of invaded cells. Because the Alvatex membrane itself is 200 microns thick and it's fixed, you can get an idea of measuring that area and the, consequently an idea of the invasion uh, level uh, and compare that between the two cell types. So the next thing I'd like to move on to is uh, an example of where we've grown cells now in 3D, and then we've uh, exposed those cells to a chemoattractant, which uh, is thought to be involved in uh, cancer cell motility. So the example I'd like to uh, talk about involves uh, IGF. So the IGF receptor is upregulated in approximately 90% of colorectal tumors. And there's a significant interest, therefore, in the role of uh, IGF, uh, particularly in epithelial mesenchymal transition. If we look at this uh, pathway here, we have IGF coming through its signaling pathway involving beta catenin and ultimately affecting the transcription of uh, ENT associated genes, so genes associated with the epithelial mesenchymal transition. And remember what I said earlier about ENT. EMT involves a loss of cell adhesion, uh, repression of ecoderin expression, and increased cell motility. So the concept is, therefore, that uh, if one were to imagine this scenario where we have a well insert, we have our cancer cells, and we are adding IGF to the bottom chamber, then we can look to see whether it affects the penetration of those cells into the scaffold uh, as a measure of their migratory ability in three dimensions. So here are some data showing uh, data for SW480 top line and 620 bottom line. This is the control, so there's no IGF here. And in this, on the right, we have IGF in the bottom chamber. And what we uh, have found is that the cells are responsive to IGF uh, well, the SW480 cells are responsive to IGF, and you can see that they've migrated more deeply uh, compared to the control. 
Now, another way of measuring that is, as I've mentioned before, measurement by area integration. And that is shown on this slide. And we can look to see uh, the data as shown by a plot which involves quantification. And cell penetration on the y-axis over the different conditions, IGF and absence and presence. So the two cell lines, uh, SW480 and 620. And what is discovered again and shown in these data is that SW480 cells are sensitive to IGF as would be predicted as in line with their nature. Now the, the data I show you to date has involved primarily histological methods to uh, visualize slides, uh, cells, sorry, uh, using uh, microscope slides and sectioning, etc. Um, and we appreciate that uh, histological methods, although very useful in showing fine detail uh, of cellular morphology, etc., may not be most appropriate for everybody's needs. And therefore, it's important to demonstrate that Alvatex can also be used with other technologies. Uh, and a fine example is confocal imaging. So in this experiment, uh, one of our customers, uh, Dr. Patricia Muller of the Beetson Institute in Glasgow, was interested in the role of P53 protein in the migration of H1299 cells. And these are human non-small cell lung carcinoma cells. And they were placed on the surface of our text, grown for a period of time, and then they were optically imaged uh, using a fluorescent dye and confocal microscopy. And you'll see here the uh, depth of penetration of the optical stack which was made. So zero being the surface uh, of the Alvatex scaffold, as it says here and then the migration of the cells into the material uh, up to 90 microns depth. So what is apparent is that the cells uh, containing the mutant P53 uh, migrated a greater dif distance into uh, the material uh, compared to the control. Now this observation uh, confirms earlier work uh, performed with Matrigel However, the advantage of using the Albatex over Matrigel is that uh, Albatex is inert. It, it does not uh, contain any unknown growth factors. Uh, it doesn't have batch-to-batch -batch variation either. So it, all, it has significant advantages over certain uh, hydrogel approaches. So I'd like to now move on to a a uh, study that we're currently working on regarding uh, cell invasion and co-copter models. So if we consider our tumor once again, and we look at these cells down here, they are beginning to invade the surrounding muscle and stromal tissues, as you can see. So we want to try and uh, simulate this in vitro using Albatex technology. And the first thing that uh, we did was to establish a layer of cells which mimics the stromal tissues. And we've done this using fibroblasts. Now, in the first instance, we've uh, tested uh, 3T3 mouse fibroblasts. Uh, however, we realize that they are not the best model. And we're subsequently now moving on to human fibroblasts and also cells containing uh, GSP reporters, so we can uh, distinguish between different cell types. So for the time being, we have uh, these 3T3 fibroblasts going very well inside the Albatex, and that's after seven days. So if we follow the simple schematic at the bottom, we seed the cells, we allow them to build up to form a tissue layer in the scaffold, and then we seed on the surface the colorectal uh, cell line. And we can see that here in this example. So we have the, uh, in this case, the 480 cells. And on the right, we have the 620 cells. And, and beneath, we have the fibroblasts. 
and that gives you an idea of the cell numbers involved. So initially half a million 3T3 cells, uh, and these were performed in our six well uh, inserts. Uh, so lower cell numbers could be used if using the 12 well insert. And they were cultured for seven days prior to adding the cells on top. Okay, that uh, shows uh, another example, lower magnification. This is the uh, fibroblast culture on its own. And then we have the co-culture here of the um, 480 and the 620 cells at the bottom. I think you can appreciate that having uh, with future experiments, having one of the cell lines labeled with GFP will help immensely in distinguishing between the two cell types. This is a simple H&E histological preparation you're looking at at the moment, but as we move forward in our investigations, we'll be using more sophisticated ways to distinguish cells, because actually there could be pioneering cells in amongst these uh, fibroblasts here from the cancer lineage, which in that slide you simply cannot uh, identify. And we can then take that one step further yet again. And in this case, what we can do is we can uh, combine the co-culture with uh, a chemoattractant, uh, just as I explained earlier. So can we encourage, therefore, these cancer cells to start to move through the, the stromal equivalent layer? And that's summarized in this scenario here. This is, uh, again, something we're currently uh, working on. I think it's very useful to share these ideas and data with you so you can start to think about how you can use Albatex technology to advance your own research program. Okay, so some of the data plus all of the application notes available online will demonstrate to you that Albatex, throwing cells in Albatex will affect cellular function, viability, differentiation function, and organization. Uh, and in a, all, all in a positive way. Another way you can think about using this technology is to actually explant uh, tissues directly into 3D culture. And this can be uh, performed on primary samples of tumor tissue as well. Okay, so actually what we have in this example is a piece of primary embryonic tissue and you can see the cells flowing out from that primary tissue into the 3D culture and maintained in 3D. So explantation directly into 3D as opposed to explantation into 2D. And of course, if that happens, your cells are re-engineering their cytoskeleton and will behave in a different way compared to in 3D. So it's a nice concept to think about uh, using your uh, um, cell lines and primary tissues in the future. Okay, so I want to finish this uh, presentation off by talking about some of the methods uh, that are compatible with Alvatex technology. And this is very important because uh, many of the analytical techniques which have been developed over the years are designed to be used with conventional 2D culture. And we appreciate that. So therefore, it's very important that we can demonstrate to you that Alvatex is indeed compatible with these methods. So you don't have to go out of your way to start reinventing new uh, analytical approaches. You can use what you currently use. You just have to be aware that it may require subtle uh, modifications. For example, we appreciate that uh, cell culture uh, is practiced regularly and that cell biologists will come into the laboratory and inspect their cultures down a standard inverted uh, light microscope. Now, to do that in three-dimensional uh, tissues is always going to be challenging. If you are given a piece of tissue from an animal or from a patient, you would normally embed that tissue, section it, and then visualize it using histological methods and tissue processing. And that's not always convenient, and we appreciate that. So to monitor and visualize your cells easily using a conventional microscope, uh, you can use a very simple staining technique. And this involves a uh, neutral red stain, 
It's a non-cytotoxic dye, which is readily available. And you add that to your culture following a very simple method. It's very rapid. And it will show you the distribution of your cells. So this is a low uh, magnification photograph uh, showing uh, a disk, which is completely red. And under the microscope at low power, you'll see a nice distribution of your cells. And at high power, you can see individual cells quite nicely. And this also gives you information about the density of the culture and cell viability. So after growing your cells for a period of time and becoming confident using Arbitex, you don't actually have to perform this test uh, at all. Uh, and in fact, we only perform it now when we're doing initial optimization steps for a new cell type. If you do require to do uh, more uh, in-depth visualization, you can practice histology. So remember what I said at the beginning. We've, we're kind of creating here uh, a tissue-like layer inside a, uh, an in vitro environment. And you can treat those samples just like you can real tissues. And that involves uh, fixation. So this is actually Bruin's fixation. Uh, you can see the intensity of yellow increasing over three weeks as the culture establishes itself. And you can take those fixed uh, 3D cultures and you can embed them. And you can do that in wax, as shown in this slide. But you can also do it in resin if you require high resolution uh, histology. And you then, after sectioning, can mount on microscope slides. And you can see over the three week period the actual staining intensifying which is reflecting the establishment of the 3D culture. And under the microscope, of course, you can create uh, really nice images of your culture, such as these. So having achieved that, you can then do things like immunocytochemistry. So looking at uh, protein expression using antibodies. Um, and we, that, this is actually data from uh, paraffin embedded uh, material. But we appreciate that certain antibodies don't like formalin fixation and uh, paraffin embedding. So it's also possible then to use cryo sectioning using OCT uh, sectioning on a cryostat. And you can see that uh, Albatex is compatible with this approach as well. Admittedly, you don't get such good cellular morphology and resolution, but that is always a disadvantage using uh, the cryostat sectioning approach. Confocal is compatible, as I have explained as we've been through the presentation. And Albatex is also compatible with electron microscopic methods. Um, so embedding in resin is one of the stages you need to go through uh, for uh, transmission electron microscopy. And you'll see here the ultrastructure of cells. This is actually two cells, one here and one here. And they're linked together by this tight junction. These are actually keratinocytes uh, growing uh, on Albatex. And this is part of our skin project. Uh, this is also a skin example. Uh, this is now visualized by scanning electron microscopy. So all these are cells. And you can just see a piece of plastic here. This is Albatex. And see on the surface, you're getting a nice pavement uh, membrane. This is the beginnings of the stratum corneum. This is an early stage uh, skin uh, example. So the point is, is that scanning electron microscopy also works. Now, Albatex is made of polystyrene, as I described. And it can be coated and treated just like standard cell culture plastic. So if your cells require a specific extracellular matrix protein or a coating such as poly D lysine or laminin, matrigel even, or pure matrix, uh, these are all examples of reagents which are compatible with Parvatex. But what's very interesting is that if you're working with a filamentous protein such as collagen, instead of creating a simple flat film of the extracellular matrix, what you actually create is a fine three-dimensional web of protein inside uh, the scaffold. 
and that is more, much more like the way in which cells will experience ECM proteins in the body rather than the flat film. So this is what we can create using Alvatex technology. Now some cells almost naturally grow in two dimensions. And when I say that, I'm referring to simple uh, epithelia. So if you think about it, a simple epithelium is a monolayer of epithelial cells uh, residing on a basement membrane. So ideally, you wouldn't want to grow that cell type inside uh, Alvatex scaffold. So, but we can still use Alvatex scaffold to support the growth of these cells. And the way we do this is that we coat the surface of the scaffold with a very thin layer of collagen. It can include other extracellular matrix components if necessary. And then on the surface of that collagen layer, we then feed our monolayer of epithelial cells. These are actually CACO2 cells representing intestinal epithelial cells. So you may ask yourself, well, why do I even need to do that? I could just use a transwell well insert. Well, let's uh, think about that for a moment. Arbitex, uh scaffolds are 90% porous. They're much more porous than a transwell porous membrane, which is approximately 30% porous at best. So there's one advantage. The other is that the cells are actually now growing here on a much more physiologically relevant substrate. Okay, it's made of this in this example of collagen. There's a, another advantage, in the, and the third advantage is actually the ability to do co-culture, and that's shown in this slide here. So, in the schematic, we have the epithelium, the uh, extracellular matrix here in the form of the basement membrane, and then beneath we have connective tissue, and there's a great deal of uh, evidence now that these cell types communicate with one another to regulate cell proliferation and differentiation. So we can start to mimic this in our 3D culture system by first of all seeding fibroblasts just like before, putting on then the gel and then on the surface having the uh, epithelial cells. So it's another way of thinking about how to create uh, culture models and co-cultures in particular. In collaboration with Mirus, a US company, we've uh, co-developed a uh, transfection reagent which enables you to transfect your cells when they are growing in 3D culture. And here we see a nice example of uh, cells having been transfected with uh, GFP. It's also important to realize that uh, many of the commercial kits which are available uh, for cell viability, for example, protein isolation, etc., are compatible with Alvatex technology. So on the left, we have a simple example of an MTT biochemical assay applied to our technology. And this is measuring cell viability, and as are XTT, MTS, and NMR Blue. And there are protocols online for all of these uh, assays and indeed all of the methods that I've described to you uh, today. On the right, we have uh, evidence of uh, protein and nucleic acid having been isolated directly from the 3D culture. So many of the commercial lysis buffers are compatible with Arbitex technology, so it is therefore not necessary to isolate your cells from the culture and you can lie the cell directly inside the material. And the last example is to show you the Pico Green assay, which has been applied to our text. And the purpose of doing that is to enable you to get a good idea of the cell number of inside the 3D culture. And the way this works is that for your particular cell type, you would grow your cells, first of all, in 2D, working out a uh, number of cells just by standard counting regimes and then creating the standard curve with cell number against uh, readout fluorescence. And then one would uh, take 
uh, samples of your 3D culture, work out the fluorescence, and then work out from the standard curve the cell number. And that's a very straightforward way of determining uh, the, the population of cells inside the 3D culture. I've already mentioned and demonstrated to you how Alvatex can be used for uh, co-culture approaches, and this really underlines, I think, the versatility of Alvatex technology. So there are many ways in which this can be done. Uh, it can involve mixing the cell types prior to seeding, either in a plate or an insert. It can involve a 3D culture in the insert and a 2D culture even in the base of the uh, multiple plate, uh, or even a 3D, and a 3D is shown here. And the purpose of those studies is you can then study the um, parachyme factors between the two cell populations. So, in summary, uh, I would like to just uh, reiterate and summarize the point that Alvatex recreates a more natural environment for cell growth, uh, bringing you closer to the real tissue situation. It is a very versatile platform. It is designed for routine 3D culture. So anybody doing 2D conventional culture currently will be able to practice 3D culture readily in their laboratory. It is easy to use. It's fully supported uh, online through various uh, protocols, application notes, and we also have a, a technical support service as well to help you get started. Um, it has been fully uh, exemplified. Its adoption is becoming widespread. People now are talking about the use of Alvatex at scientific conferences and the publication of papers by our customers. Um, and you can see some examples of this work uh, via our website at reinnovate.com. I would strongly recommend you go to that website because if you go there currently, you'll be able to sign up for a free evaluation of Alvatex uh, technology. You fill in a simple form. It will enable you to then specify uh, your research interests, uh, what uh, would be of value to you, to test an insert or a plate, and then we will uh, send that to you free of charge via our distributor, and then you'll be able to apply our tech technology to your own research program. And of course, if you do that, we'd we'll be delighted to hear uh, how you've got on uh, with your experiments. Okay, so at this point, uh, I'd like to stop the presentation and now take any questions that you may have and you can do this either via the chat box or the question and answer box uh, on the uh, webinar website. So please do ask some questions. There are some coming through already. Uh, all you need to do is just type away. So I have one here about um, how can you measure invasion under the light microscope. Um, well. That is possible using fluorescence, as I've demonstrated, uh, using the confocal. Uh, and that was what one of our customers uh, has done very easily uh, using uh, her cell line. As you remember, that was the work I presented on uh, the P53 protein. I've got a question here about uh, the uh, dimensions of Albatex. So it's a 200 micron thick membrane, and it's composed of uh, voids. And those voids are 40 microns in diameter. And the voids are connected with in, in, to one another by uh, openings called uh, interconnects, and they are approximately 15 microns in diameter. And that's what gives this material uh, its highly porous uh, nature. So it's, uh, it's not. Uh, biodegradable. Um, Albatex is made of cross-linked polystyrene. It's inert and it um, does not degrade during the course of your experiment. And that's a real advantage because 
uh, degradable uh, polymers will obviously produce something. They don't disappear into nothing. And some actually release acids locally. And that affects the microenvironment in which the cells grow. So that can be uh, detrimental to your 3D culture. When using Alvatex, you are studying just the cells and how they are growing in that environment. And there's no direct interaction with the Alvatex as such. And the other point to make about that is uh, in our experience uh, and in the experience of our uh, collaborators, when adding drugs uh, and chemicals to the Alvatex, there's no evidence that they interact with the material and that they are acting on the cells only. Okay, so how do I get a free sample? Someone's asking. Uh, please do go to the website, go to the home page, and you'll see across the top uh, the, the countdown program, as it's known, and then you'll be able to just follow the simple instructions to sign up for a uh, free sample. What are the benefits over Matrigel? Uh, so Matrigel is a animal-derived product. Uh, it is uh, unknown in its uh, composition, and it also uh, is batch-to-batch -batch variable. So in a way, it's a bit like uh, fetal calf serum uh, in some respects. Uh, if the cells, on some occasions, will grow in these uh, gels for certain uh, assays. Um, but using Alvatex uh, offers a new opportunity and it overcomes some of those limitations. And if you remember when I spoke about the work by Patricia Muller of the Beetson Institute in Glasgow, that was one of the, the, the uh, advantages that uh, she uh, reported regarding the use of Alvatex over major gel technology. Okay, so I don't think there are any more questions at this time. Um, okay, there's one more just come through about uh, can I isolate cells from the material if I need to? Uh, yes, you can is the answer. Uh, there is a, a protocol online to help you do this. It, it involves treatment uh, with enzymes. Uh, and we have a protocol for use of trypsin. Um, but please be aware that it's not possible to get 100% of the cells back from the 3D culture, mainly because there's some physical entrapment of the cells inside the scaffold which is to be expected. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, many assays uh, today do not require uh, actual cells to be released, and you can live cells directly inside the material if you need to. Um, but if you need to get some cells out, it certainly is possible that you'll get a proportion of viable cells, and as these 3D cultures tend to have more cells than a 2D culture uh, anyway, you find that you will get sufficient for your assay. Okay, so I think uh, that's everything for today. I'd just like to thank you all for attending today's webinar. Uh, please do go to the website and sign up for your free evaluation. And uh, as I say, we'll be delighted to hear how you get on. Uh, thank you very much for attending.